Agriculture is a crucial component to our everyday lives. From the food we eat, to the clothes we wear, to the beer we drink, we have agriculture to thank. So just how do we get from seed, soil, sun, and water to keg, can, or bottle? Our friends from Railway City Brewery in St. Thomas, Ontario are here to help us explain. Well, welcome to Railway City Brewery. We pride ourselves with using the freshest local ingredients we can find. We use local fresh grown hops from uh, Elgin and Norfolk County. We use uh, fresh honey from both the Western University grounds as well as uh, clover mead apiaries out in Elmer. Uh, we've done everything from uh, a ginseng blueberry beer to uh, orchard harvest featuring local Macintosh apples. So if you want an experience, come on down to the brewery. We have a nice little tap room. We also have uh, samples and tours. And uh, by all means, you'll find out firsthand about how we brew our beer and uh, the operations on how we get it from uh, beer to glass or can or bottle and it's available at your local LCBO as well as about 35 different beer stores. Barley is a member of the grass family and it was likely the world's first cultivated grain. Being widely adaptable, it is now used primarily for brewing and animal feed. Sprouted barley is high in maltose, a sugar fermented in the brewing process. Along with the enzymes derived from malted barley, it makes the perfect crop for brewing beer. Barley has a short growing season and is relatively drought resistant. In Canada, the most barley production is in Alberta, Manitoba and Saskatchewan. However, there is some barley grown locally here in Ontario. Yeast is not a part of the final product of beer, but this microorganism is important in the brewing process. Yeast acts to convert the sugar from the grain into alcohol and carbon dioxide during the fermentation process. Hops are the female flower of the hop plant. They are a climbing plant, a perennial, and member of the hemp family. In beer, hops are used as a flavoring and stability agent. When used in beer, this bitter taste provided by the hops counteracts the sweetness of the malt providing the much needed flavor to balance out the beer. Hops are harvested at the end of summer or early fall when their color changes to a paler shade of green and they have a papery texture. Once harvested, the cones are taken to a hop house where they are often heated, dried and pressed into pellets as preparation to be used for brewing. Hops are grown in most Canadian provinces, including Ontario. However, Germany and the United States substantially lead the way globally in the output of hops. All beer is made up of four typical ingredients. We have the barley malt, water, yeast and hops. We do uh, what we can here to get local ingredients wherever we can. We do Canadian malt for our base malt and uh, we have a local hop farmer out of Vienna who provides the bulk of the, the hops for Dead Elephant and some of our other brands as well. So from the brew side, our first step is taking the, the malt itself and extracting the starches and sugars and proteins from that. That's the primary job that we have as brewers here. You can't see it from this angle, but at the back of the building we've got our brew house. From there, with a water of specific temperatures, we activate enzymes in the malt to make a wort, which is the, the sugar solution from the malt that we get our beer from. We add hops to that as we boil it to add uh, bitterness to it and the various fruit and uh, citrus flavors that you'll find in our finished product. From there, we cool it down and put it into a fermenter where we pitch our yeast, which actually converts all of the sugar that we've made into alcohol for the finished product. There, we'll also pick up some other interesting sort of spicy notes to the, uh, to the beer, depending on the style we'll do. You can see that out of the Witty Traveler. From that, we'll crash it down, filter it, and end up with a finished product out of our bright tanks. From there, we'll move on to a canning line or a bottling line or just into kegs for commercial accounts. What we have here is our bottling line. We fill primarily 500 milliliter bottles. What you can see on it, it goes through two major processes. One is a CO2 purge to keep the beer from getting stale while it's in package. And then we fill it with uh, whatever beer we're bottling that day out of, uh, out of kegs. Right now we're working on our Witty Traveler, uh, which is the white pepper wheat beer that we had spoken about earlier. We do about 70 cases uh, here a day just on this machine alone. Hi, we're here in the brew house at Railway City Brewing Company. These are our fermenter tanks. We have six 40 hectoliter tanks, as well as seven 20 hectoliter fermenter tanks. We also have three bright tanks. This is where our finished product goes before packaging. We have two of the 40 hectoliter tanks and one 20 hectoliter tank. And we are also always expanding. We have four more tanks on order. Fermenters here are where our beer um, converts sugars to alcohol. 
So this is where our beer goes after the brewing process. We pitch our yeast in here and let it mature for uh, two to three weeks, depending on the style. Um, ales, two weeks, they are uh, top fermenting beer, and lagers are a bottom fermenting beer, and they ferment at a colder temperature, so they'll be in the tank for about three to four weeks. Once again, I'd like to thank our friends from Railway City Brewery in St. Thomas, and I'd also like to remind you to support our local brewers, which in turn supports our local farmers. I also hope you enjoy the beer and barbecue show here at Western Fair District.